Well, good morning and welcome to Waves of Hope with Canaveral Port Ministry. It's good to be with you on this wonderful Wednesday. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. It's so good to be with you today <clears throat> and, and to be able to share with each other and to encourage each other. I hope that this uh, ongoing Bible study encourages your heart um, as many have shared and, and uh, just hope that you're being encouraged by the time and God's word together. It's a joy to be together and also to share in that word. It's the bread of life. It's, it's good news. It is life for us as we read God's word. It's our uh, lamp to our feet, a light to our path, as the psalmist says later on. And today we'll be looking at some wisdom chapters, and we'll be looking at uh, the heart of David as he um, cries out to the Lord, as he um, ex um, praises the Lord, as he gives thanks to the Lord. We're going to hear David's heart in these wisdom psalms as he reflects, takes time to reflect on his life. And, um, and we'll be looking at that in just a moment. Before we do, though, Barbara is going to come mm -hmm. and she is going to share a song with us first. So hang on. Here, here comes Barbara to share at this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Oh, I'd like to share a song with you this morning by Selah, and it's called God Leads His Dear Children Along. I hope it will encourage you today. Mm. In shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. Where the waters cool flow, bathes the weary one's feet, God leads his dear children along. <clears throat> some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives the song in the night season and all the day long. Sometimes on the mount where the sun shines so bright, God leads his dear children along. Sometimes in the valley, in darkest of night, God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives the song in the night season and all the day long. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives the song in the night season and all the day long. Let's pray. Oh, Father, we come to you this morning, and Father, we appraise you for who you are, and we acknowledge you that you are King of the universe and creator of everything seen and unseen. And Lord, we also acknowledge that you are our good shepherd, and you lead us, 
And sometimes the way is easy and sometimes the way is hard. But you are always with us because you are Emmanuel, God with us. So I pray today that uh, the study of the Psalms will be an encouragement to us and to many and give Mike the words to say. And I pray that it will all bring glory to you and edify and encourage those who are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye. <laughs>
the Holy Spirit stops you, the coach, and you ask the Lord, what is it, Lord, you want me to know about this where I am, you've stopped me and I've noticed something very clearly. What is it you want me personally to know about that? And then just listen. Hear what he has to say to you. So in this time, in this, uh, we're looking at Psalm 31 and to start off with, to kick off our time together. And it is um, a time where David, uh, it's a Psalm of David, it says, it's for the director of music. So this is a worship song, a time of worship to, with the Lord. But here we see uh, just powerful reflections um, and deep matters of the heart are in this, in these Psalms and in this one. And uh, we see his very soul in this. David says, he's saying, rescue me in verses one and two. Rescue me and free me. Deliver me in your righteousness. I've taken refuge in you, O Lord. Let me never be put to shame. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. So the word rescue and refuge is repeated a couple of times right here from the very beginning. And, and then um, he says, redeem me, rescue me and redeem me, uh, bring, bring me through this. Redemption is that free me from, free me from something. Maybe it's slavery. Well, what kind of slavery is it? Or maybe uh, it's oppression. Free me from something. Be my redeemer. Uh, be my rock of refuge. That's what David says in this. And then um, he also says, I, he, he commits himself to the Lord in verse 14. I commit um, my spirit. I trust in you, but I trust in you. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. So here David is reflecting and um, he's saying, my time is in your hands. I trust in you. That's a great way to start every day, isn't it? To start, put your feet on the floor, get up, rise up from bed and say, Lord, my times are in your hands. I trust in you. And, and so David gives that, um, he gives that statement there. Uh, even when he's in distress, and he has anguish in his soul, verses 7 and verse 10. Um, he, he knows his emotional state. I am in trouble emotionally. I'm in anguish or I'm distressed because of the surrounding circumstances of my life. Or maybe even from my own doing, I am now in distress. And, and then David releases himself to the Lord by saying, my time's are in your hands. And then in verses 19 through 29 of chapter 31, it's an affirmation of God's love, his protection, his goodness. Um, David just affirms those things. It would do us well, even in our times of anguish and distress, to affirm God's love, loving kindness toward us. Um, the, the Hebrew word is chesed, and it's, it's this um, God's attachment to us and our attachment to him as our heavenly father, that loving kindness. When you see that word loving kindness, you think of, think of that as the attachment that we have with the father, um, that he will never let us go uh, or give up on us. So David affirms those things, his goodness, his love, his protection. And then in Psalm 32, uh, I just broke down, my, my takeaway was blessed with forgiveness, blessed with forgiveness. Um, and there he talks about, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered in the very first verse. And David is reflecting on that for himself, um, those things. And, and then it says in, in verse three, 
um, when I kept silent, he, when I kept silent with my sin, when I, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped. And, and so David is remembering that um, when you're silent in your sin, um, there is this heaviness. I don't know about you, when I mess up and I'm silent about it, um, there is a heaviness. And I think that's the Lord drawing us back to himself. And, uh, and he, he, he says, don't, in verse nine, don't be like a mule or a horse who has no understanding and must have a bridle and a bit in its mouth to be drawn, to be pulled, to be coerced. And um, God will not coerce you. Don't be like that. Don't be like a mule who's stubborn. And, and so he says that in verse 9, um, uh, uh, or they will come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love, there's that unfailing love again, um, surrounds the man who trusts in him. And so, so they're blessed with forgiveness in Psalm 32. What a great picture I see in that. And read through that. You will love it. Um, the Verse 8, I'll go back and say here, the Lord says, um, well, verse seven says, you are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Does that sound familiar to me? I know for me, thinking back and uh, thinking about um, Corey Ten Boone, who uh, was a young Christian woman in, uh, gosh, Holland, I believe it was, and, and during World War II. And you probably know the story of this lady, but uh, their family hid Jews during the Nazi invasion and occupation. And finally, they were caught and sent to concentration camps. And Corrie ten Boom um, and her sister were put in a concentration camp. And miraculously, she, Corrie ten Boom, was released. Her sister died in that camp. But the song, You Are My Hiding Place, and uh, the song that's sung with that story in that movie about her life is just reminds me of that you are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble. Um, and then it says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way. This is verse eight of Psalm 31. In the way you should go, I will counsel you and watch over you. Uh, God's hand is on you and I. He is the one who leads us through the day and through night, I will instruct you and I will watch over you. He is our hiding place. He is our place of refuge. If Psalm 34, we're going to shift very quickly to that. And the key verse for me is verse 8 in Psalm 34. If you were to jump there, you would see that it says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. And in Psalm 34, verses 3 through 4, says those who look to him are radiant, um, and they're never covered in shame. There is radiance when we look to him. Uh, it makes me think of Moses, his meeting with, uh, with God on the mountain, and he comes down from the mountain and peep. He had to hide his face because of the radiance of that time with God Almighty. And, and um, you know, God wants to make his face shine on you and I. And we are uh, called as his children. And as we look into his face, um, we as well will receive and overflow with that radiance. And so um, Psalm 34, 8 is a real key verse there. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And then, um, and then in verses 11 through 15, it's an invitation to know the Lord, to uh, fear him. Um, it says there, 
Come, my children, in verse 11, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever loves, who, whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good de de days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Um, come, children, and learn from me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. That fear, uh, you probably know this, but some people would think, what fear? You want me to be afraid of the Lord? The fear is that holiness of who God is, is coming to grips and understand that he is holy and we are not. And having that uh, reverence for the Lord so that we might draw near to the Lord. It's not a driving, driving away kind of fear. You know, we experience that among those who might want to abuse or uh, have power over us in a, and, and they create fear. Um, that is not the fear that the Lord says. The scripture says very clearly that God is love and, in, and he is light and in him is no darkness at all. This is not that darkness kind of fear um, that we might feel harm, feel harm to ourselves. It is a fear of holiness, of understanding that he is holy, and in, he invites us into that, into his uh, uh, rela a relationship with him. So Psalm 34, uh, in verses 17 through 19, says, The Lord cares for the afflicted. Uh, he understands those who are crushed in spirit and, and trouble. So we, ex we see all the experiences as you hear over and over again in the Psalms of, of all the emotions on the mountaintops, in the valleys. And, and he does care for the afflicted and, um, and he loves those and he, he, understands, he understands their heart. Um, he is close to the brokenhearted. I love that. He is close to the brokenhearted. So I am thankful for that. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. And then finally, in Psalm 39, we jump there. I know this is a whirlwind, uh, but I just wanted to touch on these things. In Psalm 39, David is, is reflecting. Um, he's reflecting on his life. And... Um, and I, I, I like this. It's, I've said this before on, on this chapel time. Um, we don't learn just from our experiences, but we learn from reflecting on our experiences. And, and so um, David is doing that in this psalm as he writes it and he meditates and he remembers that his days are fleeting um, there's brevity of life. I know for me, and, and if you're an older person like me, then you're going to say this as well. My, how time flies, right? Don't you say that the time, where did the time go? And, and we see that there is a brevity of life. I know when I was younger, I was just go, go, go. And Hey, I got all my life ahead of me. Uh, but now I say, wow, time is just flown by. And, and so, um, David is reflecting on that brevity of his life. And then he says this. He says, and this is Psalm 39, uh, show me, O Lord, verse 4, my life's end and the number of my days. Wow. Let me know how fleeting is my life. You have made my days a mere hand breath. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. Um, and so David, in his meditation, uh, understands, Lord, um, life is short. It really is. And, and he, he reflects on that. And he wants to know, Lord, help me to keep a balance to what I am doing with my life. That speaks to me about what are you doing Um with the days that you were given, with just this day that I'm given. And I would ask you that, what are you doing with the day, this day that you were given? And then uh, verse seven, it says, what do I look for? Uh, my hope is in you. 
Uh, but now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. Save me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of fools. Um, I was silent. I would not open my mouth for you are the one who has done this. Remove your scourge from me. I am overcome by you. You rebuke and discipline for their sin. And, um, and each man is but a breath. And so he says at the very end there, hear my prayer, O Lord, listen to my cry for help. Be not deaf to my weepings, for I dwell with you as an alien. David understands that uh, life on earth is, is living as a stranger, really as a guest. Uh, we are a guest in our life here on earth um, where God has given us this time. And um, if you're a follower of Christ, um, we're called aliens and, and strangers to this world. Peter addresses the apostle Peter in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. He says to those who are scattered abroad, aliens and strangers in a foreign land, we should see ourselves as simply camping out for a time here. And God has allowed us this time. He's giving you and he's giving me the opportunity to reflect him as we meet with him and, and we see his face and receive the joy and radiance of, of the Father in our lives. He's given us this time to also overflow with that in the lives of others. And so um, he says, uh, he says, help me to know the number of my days. And I hope that is your case today as well. Well, praise the Lord, and um, thank you for listening today. If you don't know Christ, trust him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.